so my kids say we need to come up with a name if we're going to do a YouTube channel. Uh, I don't know if we're going to do a whole channel, but we're going to put together the things that uh, we're doing currently. Uh, so we're going to take a little play on words with my uh, wobbly legs and uh, the things that we create here in our shop. So we're going to call it Crazy Legs Creations. So bear with us as we try to put together a little channel just for information. Thanks for watching. All right, YouTube, this is our first video. Uh, you're gonna find a couple things uh, in here that are a little different and I'll try to explain. But we're doing a uh, 57 Chevy frame off swap frame chassis on a Tahoe. So I have a 2001 Chevy Tahoe, we're swapping frames. This is one of our projects. There's a lot of other things going on, but we'll uh, show you this project from start to finish. Uh, I wanna ask your forgiveness. When I'm walking and filming, I'm a little wobbly. I'm a partial paraplegic and so I kind of waddle. So some of the camera work is a little twisty. So forgive me on that. Um, I'm gonna try to document it, not as a, just as a kind of scientific, so you can kind of see at least what it is and how it's done. I haven't done this uh, before, but it's my first one. I'm using the Easy Chassis Swap, 57 Chevy Tahoe. Uh, it's got the mount, mounts and the brackets and everything needed to uh, put a 57 or any kind of the, the fit tri fives onto a Tahoe frame. So this is our first video. So forgive us, we're just learning. And I keep saying we in the video and it's usually just me. Tonight I got my son filming for me, but most of the time it's just me. But uh, thanks for watching. All right, here we go. So we got a 1957 Chevy. Had it for 27 years, thought I was going to rebuild it. Uh, I have done a lot of work on it, new cab corners, rebuilt the motor, new window, started all the body work on the front, got everything pretty close, fixed a lot of the lines, rebuilt the, rebuilt the engine. Uh, pretty good bed, pretty good uh, cab, it's pretty straight. Need some glass work, um, but I'm getting tired. Uh, I know when I get done, I'm not gonna have a daily driver. So I'm wanting to do something different. So we have started, or I have started a new project. Uh, we are going to take the 1957 off the frame. And this is what we're looking at. Oh, we just got it up on the rack and I'm just pulling off the first parts. It's been rolled, it's got uh, 140,000 miles. It's got the 5.3. I think it must come out of someplace dry. There's not a lot of rust underneath. Uh, really clean, actually. Uh, there's not been a lot of dinging. There's no bumps on the rear end. Hasn't taken any hits. Uh, looks like it might have been the rollover uh, from what I can see. Looks like it was probably a slow four-wheel drive rollover or they were out in the hills or slid off the road because the all the scratch marks are going up and over and into the other side. It was a full rollover. One wheel was blown out. Don't know if that was a culprit. It was in four low when I started it up. Uh, so we're excited to uh, get going. All right, we're twisting some, twisting some of our first bolts here. There's our first part out. Put that here. First major component out. <laughs> major, minor. Chassis, 57, wasn't as bad as I thought. Gonna travel to the end with all of this mess. Woo! Computer stuff. A blessing and a cursing all at once. And I got to get rid of a Tahoe parts. Old Tahoe parts to the wreck. Not much there. Frames off. 
Body's off. Frames down. 57's waiting. Okay, so we got the body off the Tahoe, cleaned it up a bit. Uh, the paint blew off this with the pressure washer. Look at these wells. That's a 20 year old vehicle. Looks like it was just welded up yesterday. No rust. Good looking frame, very clean. Uh, so I got to chop off one, two, three, four body mounts. Now this one here, I have to leave the hole for the brake cable mount, which is right there. And I have to leave that hole for the brake cable mount. And so I'm gonna cut that bracket around and make that a nice bracket to just mount that brake cable. Same thing, I think with this third one up here, all three mounts where the brake cable goes through. Uh, so that's our next step. We're gonna be plasma cutting those off. But the engine's pretty clean. It's a, I think we got about 90,000 miles on this uh, 5.3. So we've got it all stripped down, the whole wiring harness is off, and we're ready to go to town. Uh, I hope I can get this done before I die. Got a lot of work. But I think I'm gonna keep the original exhaust and stuff. I gotta find some, uh, try to find some plugs to cover these exhaust intakes on this uh, emission stuff. I'm getting rid of all that. So there's several holes in the exhaust manifold. I could get new headers, but right now it just seems like it's another thousand and another thousand bring on another thousand so uh pretty clean frame though i was pretty pleased when i got the body off uh, every bolt i think this thing came out of arizona or something but every bolt is clean and uh we're coming apart okay here we go we just got started so we're taking off all three brackets um body mounts on the passenger side plasma cutter that I use is uh, a is a, it's a Olympus, uh, CT520D. Good machine. It's also got TIG and ARC. I haven't used the TIG and the ARC, but the plasma cutter has been a good friend. So I got wet canvas, I got a sheet of metal, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and hack off a piece of this bracket. I think I'm okay. Fire extinguisher hose right next to me. If I get blown up, this is it. The instructions clearly say to leave bracket two and three partially intact so you have a mount for your brake cable, but I just packed it up. We'll come back to that. But for now, here we are. This one was supposed to take off. So we cut off all of the mounts, uh, including back here. We got the bulkhead sitting over the back, on the back. Uh, we cleaned up all the mounts. It took a little bit to kind of get the plates off. There was a double plate there, uh, just where the bracket mounted, but we got them off. All three mounts, got them cleaned up nice. Now we're working on the front. I guess the front bulkhead, I don't know if it's the rear bulkhead or whatever. But we plasma cut around there. I have plasma cut around there. There's no way to it. Uh, on both sides, yeah, I don't have it completely busted loose yet. I got some a little bit of slag here and there where I cut, but I cut straight across the top of the tube and then around the bottom and then out the front a few inches because that's kind of the measurements I got from Easy Swap guy. So we're cut around. I just don't have everything busted completely loose. So I buzz around it, but I got a little bit of cleanup to do. And then I'll see if we can get this front, whole front nose piece off. 
Okay. All right, I want to introduce you real quick to the Easy Chassis Swap, Ed, uh, with Easy Chassis Swap, great guy to work with. I got the parts. This is the 57 to Tahoe conversion kit. This is the rear, rear bulkhead. Uh, just for information, uh, on this frame, we had to cut off, there were tabs that stuck out here about three, four inches, and those tabs had to be cut off. This is probably the original length of the frame on the top, but there was a tab here, tab here, and a tab out here that the uh, hitch hooked onto. And we had to cut, I had to cut all those off, and then I cut this off. And the reason this is that way is so that this rests on top of it. Uh, but this is the rear bulkhead, they call it. So it's about a four inch cut. There's some tabs and you'll see where those tabs need to be cut. So this comes on. Uh, come over here for a second. See the, the rear bracket? This is gonna, these go up cut those holes. You gotta get the ground off until those holes lined up and you can put your half inch bolt on there. So that's your rear, your rear bulkhead. Now let's go around to the, the main center piece here. Um, so come on close in here. So there was instructions on where this was supposed to be. There's a splice in the frame. It says we're supposed to be lined up with the edge of the splice on the frame. And from what I understood in the pictures that Ed sent me, it goes right here. Here's the splice. So I lined up this center block, which is the rear, the front bed mount and the rear cab mount. Okay, the mid body mount. So, and that worked pretty well. Um, I just had to grind off uh, right over here, there was a Tahoe body mount, and uh, I don't know, there might have been another Tahoe body mount there. There was one here and one there. So I got rid of those, and then this places right on. So that's the mid body mount. This is the front, no, the rear front cab mount is what this is. So the front cab mount yeah, it lines up the same way. Now, Ed told me that this edge right here, from what I could see, had to be equal with this. That's the edge of the splice of the frame. Now, they might be different, frames might be different. What happened was, when I got my cab on here, I tacked it on, it wouldn't line up right. I was too close to the fan, my tires weren't centered in the, in the fender well, and I couldn't get it lined up. Now, I don't know how that's gonna affect the, the bed, but for now, I had to get some more room on the radiator, so I moved forward one and a half inches from the edge of the frame to this edge here and moved it forward. There was a body mount here for the Tahoe, which has been removed. So it's tight against the frame, the angle iron's on top, and I'm an inch and a half, did I say quarter? An inch and a half over. So now here on the front bulkhead and on the rear, there is um, this slider. See this slider? You can adjust where the front radiator mount support sets. This is, uh, yeah, the radiator support. So you can slide this. When that mount was all the way backwards back there, this was maxed out backwards, and my my radiator support was right up against the thing. With it out here, I have enough room, I think, for a thin radiator. I won't be able to use an old school fat thick radiator. It's gonna have to be fairly thin, but I think I can fit in there. And uh, also, there was some other areas that were banging into each other. Oh, okay, so I made a modification right here. So right here, see this little modification? The step side inside the truck, so when you open the door, here's the step side you step on down in the floor, and then this goes up like this and the door frames right here, and there's a square box. Well, it was jamming into here, and I couldn't get the cab far enough forward, so I had to cut that little notch in there. That's what I had to do, because I couldn't get the cab to move any further forward, and this just give it a little bit. I didn't want metal on metal. I am using the rubber Tahoe mounts. I made this modification in there so that step side wasn't hitting metal. I didn't want metal on metal. This is the Tahoe body mount. Uh, these Tahoe mounts you're reusing. I cut a notch into there too, also so that my cab wasn't touching this metal cup. So I cut that little tab in there. Now I was a little, there is a spacer here. It's called the front cab spacer that goes on top. Now this, uh, these on the bottom, this is just a large hole, right? And I was like, what holds it down in there? I was trying to get a hold of Ed. Well, then I realized the Tahoe had these on it. They go underneath there. This goes down through the floor on the floorboard and that bolts nicely through the cab right up there and holds that bottom big rubber cup up against the bottom of that mount so that it holds it in place and pinches it in there so you're fully rubber mounted. And this stuff all came off the Tahoe, body mounts and these cups. And so save those when you pull off your Tahoe. Here's our modified uh, body mount from the Tahoe. 
and that body mount, the new body, the new forward cab mount that has the little angle cut out sets right in there. And I didn't want the mount pounding on the metal or I didn't want this hitting it. So I have a little clearance. So you can see where the bolt comes up through. It sets pretty close to the frame. Come around on this side. So over here, so you can see that that sets pretty close to that. And so I cut that little notch out so I didn't have this metal cup rattling against there just to give me a rubber isolation. And it sets just about like that right now. And that forward cab mount has that little notch in it that sits right here. But they all work out pretty well and uh, seems to be coming together really well. I was excited, it all just kind of bolted down. The front cab mounts are adjustable and the back cab mounts are adjustable on the easy swap. So um, let's move to the front, front bulkhead. So on the front bulkhead, this was a lot of cutting and I showed you an earlier video or I'll show you, I'll try to splice this in there. Come around on this side and let's look at this angle right here. So we cut off right here. There was a main tube that went between and the horn came all the way out here in the front. So I took my saw or my, my plasma cutter. I cut down according to Ed's measurement, down straight out around that tube down and over and then i had to grind and work and get it fit his measurements weren't exact but you're actually cutting in uh, come up on top right here you're cutting in into this power steering bracket it's part of the steering mechanism i had to cut into there now i'll weld that all up but you had to get this bracket all the way back into there and all the way down so it was almost flush with the frame so on this side you can see from the side over here it's right up against this bolt and it's and it's a little below center by the time you get your cut line in there so you're a little below center on this bolt and that's kind of your home to make this line i laid the end of the thing uh the other side against this and drew my line with a white chalk mark and then pulled it off and then ground it down to it i actually found that a grinder with a cutoff wheel worked better than the plasma cutter. The plasma cutter is just so messy and I just cut down with a grinder wheel, cut across there, that frame's thin enough. It was pretty easy to cut with a flat cut. So now, don't look at my welds down here, but we're starting to weld on the brackets permanently. We've had the cab mounted and did a little test fit. We'll show you later, but uh, it went really well. Now my body mounts are forward on the radiator and it seems to be fitting better. Um, surprisingly, this shock tower even fits up into a hump in the inner fender and it fits up in there. I cut the bolt off, but the inner fender has a little hump. Chevy is still doing the same thing, and, the, and there's a hump right in there. So I had to cut a little bit off of the uh, inner fender right here on this hump to make it fit down all the way and set nicely. But uh, we've had it off and on a couple times, and uh, I just wanted to show you the easy chassis swap kit. It's a pretty put together kit, pretty nice, pretty solid. And uh, the bumper mounts go onto here, and the bumper mounts right on here. Just for information, uh, my old stock uh, Chevy frame, this is gonna be about five inches higher. So it's gonna be a good looking build when we get done. It'll be nicely built like a four wheel drive. Thanks. So where this sets in here, uh, where the, on the back of the cab, not this one, but about, this has some adjustability here. So you could come forward. When we first put the cab on here, it was all the way backwards. And that's when I didn't have room for a radiator and the tires weren't centered in the uh, fender well. So this can move and you can get some adjustment out of it. The thing that I found the most helpful, when I had the cab off of the Chevy, I measured the distance between the two cab mounts on the Chevy when there was no truck in the middle, and I was able to get a really good measurement off of that to make sure I was really close. You know, I have some leeway here, but I was able to come in the center, measure from here over to this mount, and it lined up nicely, and I thought, okay, I'm in, I'm in good money. So.
We got 57 sitting on a Tahoe frame. Sits down beautifully, mounts going on like perfect. I love the height. Isn't it awesome height? Oh, dang. Flatten it out, looks tough. All right, so we threw the bed on tonight. It wasn't a throw on, it was a job. But we got new short beds to fit the Tahoe frame. Um, it's really about an inch and a half outside the wheel wells, but that's kind of what we got. Uh, the wheel wells are lined up pretty nicely, front and rear. I had to kind of give a big gap in the cab to make it work right now. So there's a little bit more gap than I want, but we'll figure something out. Sitting on a pair of 33s. I think it'll clear really good in the front. I don't know about the back. It's coming a little close. So that was video one uh, for the 57 Chevy Tahoe build. We'll be putting out another video as soon as we get a little further down the road and try to put some things together. Hopefully you're going to be able to see it come all the way together to driving up on the mountain to go fishing and daily driving it to work and taking it to the lake pulling a boat. So thanks for watching with us and uh, look for another video. It should come out in the next, who knows, few weeks, few months, but there should be some more information out there on this uh, chassis swap. Thanks.